the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series returns to Brands Hatch in early June for American Speed Fest 6. The event is a favourite with UK race fans and the drivers too. Thousands of fans flock to see their heroes and some pure NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series racing. Circuit. Only five turns, but huge gradient and undulation to this circuit, which first opened its doors in the 1920s, started car racing here in 1950s, and then, of course, went on to host a range of world championship events, including, of course, Grand Prix racing here in the UK between 1960 and the last Formula One race held here was back in 1986. We've got two fantastic races coming up later on today, but pole position and qualifying to be sorted out very very shortly and well that is going to be around this fantastic circuit so to show us around the circuit we managed to catch up with Luca Lassar a double former champion and look at what he managed to do on an onboard lap Hi everyone, I'm Alex Sedgwick and here's a lap of Brands Hatch. So uh, we're heading up to Paddock Hill just here, completely blind this corner, third gear and um, it's terrifying. Uh, completely blind and then the track drops away, you see where you're going, pin the throttle and uh, make a pass just here on the Pegasus car, then hard on the brake, down to second, trying to get it stopped for Druids. And once again, full power, sliding the car out, spinning up the wheels, up to third gear, down to Graham Hill, hard on the brakes again, over the kerb, back on the power, the car's moving around the whole time here, and then running all the way down the back straight, up to third gear, into probably the hardest corner on the track, over the kerb, and then just getting held up a little bit, down to second, and then once again, turning into the right, really hard to get on the power out of here, Feather in the throttle all the way past the pit exit, then up to third, full power, and away you go. And there's a lap. Well, the onboard lap actually from Alex Sedgwick there, the only British driver in the field, just 19 years of age and making his debut this season. He's a rookie in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series and has a new team for this weekend. We saw him racing in Elite One for NRT No Centini at Circuit Ricardo Tormo in Valencia for rounds one and two of the championship. He moved over to Elite Two when we were at uh, the uh, Francia Quarter round in Italy for the third and fourth races of the season. And he's back to Elite One for this weekend and has moved on to Brax Racing uh, as a new team for him. But uh, we uh, will be interested to see, as the only British driver in the field, how he gets on in this qualifying session that is coming up. Now, qualifying is key to success here at Brands Hatch. Ten out of the last 12 Elite One races around this twisty British track have been won from the first row of the grid and six of those 10 wins went to the pole position sitter. So it is hugely vital that we get the drivers that we expect, the likes of Roman Inietta, who rejoins the championship here. We can see his car there in the pit lane. Romain is ready to go out towards qualifying. And the way that the cars will head out onto the circuit as they start to peek their nose out from the garage now is based upon the fastest time that they set in yesterday's two free practice sessions. So whether it be free practice one, or free practice to the fastest time set in either one of those practice sessions dictate how they head out of pit lane and the order for this very short and sharp qualifying session all of the cars will be out there in elite one that's coming up shortly for 10 minutes of qualifying well if you think a, a lap around the brands hatch circuit here is going to take your out lap is about 60 seconds because it's say it's just 1.2 miles long quite a short circuit you then have 10 minutes to get your quick time in and the top 12 cars will go through to fight it out for Super Bowl and that Super Bowl session 
is going to be held over just a further five minutes. So as the cars begin to line up in the pit lane, the man who was fastest in free practice yesterday is the reigning champion, Alan Day, sits there at the front of the queue in the pit lane. Anthony Coopen, who has been a pole sitter here for the last two years on the trot, he was a pole sitter last year and the year before, second in the queue. And there is the car that's third in the queue. And that is the very rapid Italian at the wheel of the racist motorsport Ford Mustang, Gianmarco Urkeli who has had well a mixed start to the season we saw him on the podium he's had one podium finish so far this year that came in the first of the two races at francia quarter in italy so they're queuing starting to form in the pit lane you can see it's slightly cloudy here it's very warm though high ambient temperature the crowds beginning to pour in we are expecting an enormous crowd here as part of speed fest six here at Brands Hatch and what is a busy weekend for the NASCAR family we saw Johnny Sauter win at Texas Motor Speedway in the Camping World Truck Series yesterday we saw Kurt Busch qualify on pole position for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series in Michigan and will can that man there qualify on pole position in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series here in Great Britain Alan Day at the front of the queue which is getting ever larger now the race director will be starting to call more and more cars down you can see the new front ends the new camaro front end to the number 24 car in the hands of double pole sitter here previously anthony kumpen he is a double former champion as well he's got the reigning champion ahead of him in the queue ready to head out of pit lane and it looks as though the queue is ever ever growing larger by the look of things down pit lane so there is that new camaro front end on the number 24 car of anthony kumpen being run by pk car sport driver that finished second in the championship last year so he was a double former champion there's number 37 that will be one to watch out for again which is going to be the car of Tomo Ferrando he is a champion Tomo Ferrando but he was a champion in Elite 2 last year and will be another driver to watch out for the number 50 car has gone beautifully well in the hands of Loris Heismans all season he's been involved in a few incidents along the way Loris Heismans so he is currently sitting slightly further down the championship order than you would expect at the wheel of that number 50 car but come the outright pace of the car in qualifying or it's maybe what way down in the championship with just one podium to his name that came last time out in race two at Francia quarter he will certainly want to watch out for there's another former champion as well former elite two champion Stenis Longin at the wheel of the second of the two PK car sport cars sharing with Felipe Rebello one of the Brazilians on the grid this weekend and our other Brazilian who we would love to see on the grid I'm sure he'll be watching out there in Brazil he won the Challenger Trophy last time out at Francia Corta Marconi Abreu get well soon Marconi all of the NASCAR family here are all thinking of you and uh, we wish you all the very best so the queue beginning to form you briefly saw a shot of 2000 Monster Energy champion Bobby Labonte and you can see the race control has calling the pit order so they are all lined up now and almost ready to go for the start of what is as I say just a 10 minute qualifying session there's a number 90 car of Alex Sedgwick so moving over to Brax Racing for this weekend there is 56 machine and that could well be one to watch out for Nicola Rocca who has claimed a pole position here Nicola Rocca that was back in 2015 Nicola Rocca was on pole position we've not seen a huge amount of him racing over the course of the last few seasons but Nicola Rocca great to see him back it will be interesting to see how he will get on in this qualifying session we'll be with number 56 Cal Racing Chevy Nicola who has won races his best overall championship finish was back in 2016 when he finished in fourth place so looks as though almost ready at pit lane you can see this enormous field of cars stretching their way in double file all the way back down the Brands Hatch pit lane and with Alan Day on fresh tyres for this one they're limited to the amount of tyres that they've got to use over the course of a weekend so very few tyres that they can use just four for a weekend and that means that tyre preservation for all of the drivers Elite 1 and Elite 2 is key with less than a minute to go now before the qualifying session gets underway Alan Day is at the front of the queue now with so many cars out there and only a 10 minute session including of course the outlap the key is to try and find a quick lap nice and early but to do that of course you've got to find a clear space of tarmac and which is 1.2 miles which is what 1.9 kilometers around the circuit that is a task in itself and we had 17 drivers within one second 
in free practice yesterday. So going to show just how competitive it is. So we go green here at Brands Hatch and qualifying gets underway for round five of the 2018 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. There's Formula One wheel at the wheel of the deck sweat car number 66, Christophe Bouchou heading out onto circuit. I was very fortunate enough to have a passenger ride with Christophe Bouchou around the Brands Hatch circuit a couple of years ago in one of these cars and I've got to say that sensation it gives you as a passenger let alone as a driver is absolutely startling so the drivers out there try to weave from side to side try to build the temperature in these control BF Goodrich tyres that they all run now the lap record in this qualifying format that we've currently got was set by Nicola Rocca a few seasons ago a 48.4 using the current format that we use there is Bobby Labonte former NASCAR champion just heading round through Druids which is turn two here at Brands Hatch the overall best lap we've had when the format was subtly different before we had this sort of top 12 go through to Super Bowl is a 48.390 and that was set by Fred Gamion a couple of seasons ago now we are on a different tyre this year the BF Goodrich tyre but its compound is identical to the ones we've used in the past so we'll see to what sort of times begin to come in as the cars are now just heading round to start their flying laps. So Roman Inietta and Bobby Labonte about to head onto their first flying lap. And this is a great, great shot. Shows you what turn two looks like, and you can see just how much the cars descend, turning their way out of Paddock Hill Bend. Number 77 pressing on. That's Alexander Graf, the Swedish driver, multiple Swedish V8 champion. And you can see just how busy the tarmac is. The key is absolutely finding a clear piece of tarmac, maybe picking up a toe down one of the short straights here at Brands Hatch, but largely it's more important to make sure your lap is not compromised and the cars, I think, are just trying to string themselves out and work out where they might be able to find a clear piece of tarmac at the times shortly to come in. Anthony Cooper, for the moment, goes to the top of the times. His first flying lap is a 53.1 say we're going to be down into the 48 second bracket without question at this stage so Alan Day out of Paddock Hill Bend onto the brakes up towards Druids goes the reigning champion Alex Sedgwick briefly on his first flying lap the British driver to the top of the times it's the only circuit in the 2018 calendar that Alex Sedgwick has raced on before so he'll be hugely keen in front of his home crowd caught up with Alex yesterday supporting a good performance and himself and Nicola Rocca at the moment are the quickest two on the first flying lap that we've had but the first flying lap is just a 58 second or 51 second lap currently we're expecting as we say certainly to be down in the 48 at the end of this session for which unbelievably as you can see only seven minutes remain at this stage and the cars have only done one flying lap so far so as we said it is so so important particularly around here at Brands Hatch to get yourself on pole position when you bear in mind that 10 of the last 12 elite one races have been won from the front, front row of the grid Alan Day goes to the top of the times into the 52nd bracket now. That's a 50.074 for Alan Day. And Jim Marco Urkeley, who was on the podium last time out at Francia Quarter, moves up to second quickest. Third is Remain in the Etta. And Anthony Coopan, twice a pole sitter here at Brands Hatch, only fourth currently, six and a half minutes to go. And you can still see just how much traffic there is and how difficult it is to try and pick your way through. So down onto the Cooper straight. Sweeping our way through the very fast left-hander at Surtees Corner before the circuit then starts to sweep right at McLaren and Clearways and Clark, which are sort of three corners, but it's all just one turn in reality. You sort of flick left at Surtees and then just keep turning right. As Freddie Gabion goes to the top of the times, Fred Gabion down into the 48-second bracket, the first driver to do so, a 48.989 for Fred Gabion, 51 thousandths of a second behind him is Loris Haysmans. I said watch out for Loris, he's the leading junior trophy competitor currently. There goes Alex Sedgwick, just turning his way round through Druid's corner at the wheel of the number 90 Brax racing car. Alex has dropped down to fifth quickest currently at his home circuit. Let's just have a quick look and see whether he's got a spare bit of tarmac. There's Fred Gamion, here's the current pole sitter, so that's the first time we've seen Fred, you can see bouncing over the curve, the car starting to move around underneath the Frenchman. He's never won this championship, he's won races, but he's finished runner-up on a couple of occasions as Alan Day goes to the top of the times to a 58.582 for Alan Day and worryingly double former champion at the moment Lucas Lassar who was a race winner at Francia Quarter. You can see him at the very bottom of the graphics on your left, only 15th at the moment for Lucas Lassar who 
was hoping for a solid weekend. He's never raced at Brands Hatch before at the wheel of the number 33 Michi Motors car. He was only 19th quickest in free practice and knew he had work to do. And it looks as though he is at the moment not going to make the cut. There is Alan Day, number 54. Now he's topping the times at this stage into the mid 48 second bracket. Is he going to stay out or is he going to save those tyres? And also we can see that up to 10th has now come Anthony Cooper. So he was outside of the cuts, not going to make Super Bowl. In fact, Alan Day has done what I thought. He comes into the pit lane to save the tyres and all of the other cars that look as though they're safely through to Super Bowl are now coming in. That includes the number nine car of Gianmarco Urkeli for Racers Motorsport. He brings the Ford Mustang in. Freddy Gabion at the wheel of the Toyota Camry also dives for the pit lane to save his BF Goodrich tyres for Super Pole. And one of the Brax racing cars is making its way back out of pit lane because they're at the very top of the pit lane. That, I think, is going to be the car of Mark Goosens. He's dribbling his way back out of pit lane. So the race really is to be the first back out of pit road. So they come in, they get the car checked over very quickly. You can see them already lining themselves up at the bottom of pit lane, ready for Super Pole to get out there for the top 12 for what will be a further five minutes. There's Nicola Rocca at the wheel of the number 56 Cal Racing Chevy. And Nicola Rocca at the moment up to eight. Has been a pole sitter here previously at Brands Hatch. That came a couple of seasons ago. And now the fastest lap is looking as though it is going to go the way of Stinis Longy. We shall briefly pop up on the graphics there, but I'm not sure whether that lap has been allowed ultimately for Stinis Longy. Oh, track sensors here at Brands Hatch, particularly at turn number three, whereas if the car runs beyond the curb line, a photograph is taken which proves track limits, and it may well be that some of those have possibly disappeared some of those lap times. So three minutes of the session to go. There goes Bobby Labonte, number 18, made his debut, of course, in the NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series here at Brands Hatch 12 months ago. Bobby Labonte currently not inside the top 12, so not going to make Super Bowl. Quick chat to him yesterday suggested he's over the jet lag now and ready for a solid weekend. He's 15th quickest. Lucas Lazar, who was outside of the top 12, had got himself back inside the top 12, but has subsequently dropped back out again. So he's back down to 14th quickest, the double former champion. What can Bobby Labonte do on this lap? He's behind the Brax racing machine of Jerry Devert. And as Bobby comes over the start finish line, is that going to see him inside the top 12? No, it's a, it's a quicker lap from Bobby. It keeps him 15th currently with now just two minutes of the session to go so the 2000 monster energy nascar champion is not at the moment going to make the cup so in the entry this weekend so we count up we've got yeah we've got enough cars the top 15 will go through to super bowl that's the way so no, top 12 will go through to super bowl two minutes to go and alan day still looking as though on our timing screens that we see he's topping the time. The graphic suggesting Alex Sedgwick has got the fastest lap with a 48.449, but I think that lap has probably been removed in reality, so the graphic on your screens that you're looking at will include some laps that will ultimately be removed by the race director because the cars have gone beyond the limits of the circuit. So at the moment it looks as though... Alex Sedgwick, Nicola Rocca, Stevie's Longin and Francesco Sini, who are the top four, all are going to potentially lose those laps, which means that Alan Day, who's fifth quickest on the graphic, is going to head towards the top of the times. There goes the number 90 car in the hands of Alex Sedgwick once more, with now less than a minute to go in this qualifying session. We've not seen Alex Sedgwick through to Super Bowl in the previous outings at either Super Ricardo Tormo in Valencia or at Francia Corta either. So it looks as though Alex Sedgwick is going to make the cut possibly this time through. A couple of times on the graphics, but I do fear that lap time may ultimately drop him down to the bottom of the top 12. So a bit of a mystery as to why at this stage the graphics we're seeing don't match the official times that we're seeing. I think it's largely because the race director will be communicating to the timekeepers that some of those laps were not clean laps. Sedgwick still pressing on at this stage, still looking very racy, so he moved over to Brax Racing this weekend, the number 90 car, pushing on, Francesco Sini now has got himself inside the top 12, Alex Sedgwick is now in 12th place, so he is showing in your graphic as the fastest, he's still clinging on to a place for Super Pole, and heads over the start finish line with 10 seconds to go. But the graphic that you're looking at includes laps that will ultimately be removed because cars have gone beyond the white lines 
donate the edge of the circuit. The chequered flag is out, and we will wait and see as to whether Alex Sedgwick can clang up and on to a place inside the top 12. We are about to thread its way very shortly over the start finish line. Certainly looks though Alan Day is at the top of the times that we are looking at rather than the graphic with a 48.582 being the fastest clean lap we've seen in qualifying. And top 12 then, ignore the graphic to the left of your screens at this stage, we'll go with the official timekeepers. It is Alan Day who was fastest in that session, so we'll go through to Super Bowl with a 48.582. Second quickest on the official times is the number 50 car of Horace Hazemans with a 48.588, so just six one thousandths of a second separating the front two in that first element of qualifying, and a further 12 one thousandths separating Loris Hazemans in second position from the number three Toyota Camry of RDB competition, and Fred Gabion, who is third on a 48.6 exactly fourth quickest number nine Gianmarco Urkeli safely through to Super Bowl with a 48.743 from the racers Ford Mustang and fifth is Mark Goosens at the wheel of the Brax Racing Chevrolet Camaro car number 91 with a 48.768 seventh quickest former pole sitter here at Brands Hatch is the Cal Racing Chevrolet of Nicola Rocca with a time of a 49.006. Eighth quickest is number 11, former Elite 2 champion uh, Stevie's Longine at the wheel of the PK Car Sport Chevrolet. He is through to Super Bowl with a 49.010. Ninth quickest for number 77, Alexander Graf at the wheel of his Chevrolet with a 49.042. Tenth quickest only at this stage for pole sitter for the last two years. So work to do in Super Bowl. A bit more pace to find perhaps for double former champion number 24 Anthony Coupin with a time of a 49.158 Francisco Cini will be chuffed as well the Solaris Motorsport Chevrolet Camaro new team for this year Francisco Cini hugely likable uh, chap and the number 12 car is 11th quickest so he is through to Super Bowl with a 49.235 and the last car through to Super Bowl the first time he's managed to do so at his home NASCAR Grand Prix as well is the teenage British driver Alex Sedgwick moving over to Brax Racing in the Ford Mustang number 90 with a time of a 49.251 so they're the top 12 that go through a couple of interesting cars that miss out though as well first car to miss out on Super Bowl is number 37 the canal facing Ford Mustang of Thomas Ferrando we would expect him to be through but he's not made it and neither has double former champion number 33 the Michoud Motors Chevrolet SS of Lucas Lassar say double champion but hasn't raced at Brands Hatch before so not familiar with the circuit he's 14th quickest and doesn't make it through neither does the 1999 Bush NASCAR champion and of course the Monster Energy champion from 2000 Bobby Labonte uh, 15th quickest for him uh, number 32 the go fast racing Ford Mustang of Roman Iniata another car not to make it through as well the quality of the field year on year on year just gets higher and higher and higher in the NASCAR wheel and Euro series so Roman Iniata is not through he was 16th quickest 17th was number seven the Chevrolet of Martin Dubeck 18th was number 73 Wilfried Busen and 19th was uh, number 19 the Japanese driver number two Miro Kenka and then uh, finishing the top 20 it was number 27 which was Angelo Regare the Italian who finished in 20th position but already you can see down in the pit lane the drivers that are through to Super Bowl there is Francisco Senior the wheel of the Solaris Motorsport car Roman Iniata who was just outside of the top 16 is sitting there in the pit lane but you can see he's not quite in the queue to go out it's just his garage is down towards the bottom of the pit lane so he's not getting himself into position the number 50 car is however and that is Loris Hazemans who I would say has been one of the drivers this year that has had the pace what Loris has just not had the Dutch driver is the look at uh, the two races in Valencia he was involved in incidents in both of those races we saw him finish he finished 30th in one race and 24th in the other he was involved in an incident in the first of the two races at Francia Corta and came through to finish in 23rd position but he finally trode his shoe true pace and wasn't involved in any incidents in the second of the races that we had at Francia Corta last time out in Italy and he finished in third position so he is a long way down in the championship standings he's on 68 points and that is some 69 points half the amount that the championship leader coming into this weekend Fred Gabion has got for Loris he's had the pace but not the consistency whereas for Fred Gabion he's had the consistency 
all season so far. He's only finished off the podium at the wheel of the number three Toyota Camry from RDV competition once so far this year, and that was when he was fourth last time out. So green flag waves, Alan Day leads the pack of cars out for Super Bowl for Elite One of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series here at Brands Hatch. And well, if you thought that first part of qualifying was short and sharp, this second part of qualifying is even shorter and sharper because there are now just five minutes to get the quick lap in for these Elite One drivers before they will jump out of the car, hand it over to the Elite Two driver, and then we go through the same process once more. So a busy weekend for the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, a busy weekend for the NASCAR family generally. Of course, the Xfinity race takes place later on today in Michigan. We'll be streaming our two races live today here from Brands Hatch for the Elite One cars. The race is scheduled to get underway at 14.50 Central European time. The Elite Two race is scheduled to get underway at 18.15 Central European time. Both of the races will be held over 35 laps or 35 minutes, whichever comes first. So we get the outlaps now done and dusted for Super Bowl. And as we say, you know, they come over the start finish line. Even Alan Day, who was at the front of the queue, over the start finish line with three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Only now starting his first flying lap for Super Bowl. So you cannot afford to make a mistake. You cannot afford to flat spot the tyres. Because of course, as we said earlier on, the tyres are very, very limited. And by the end of the weekend, the tyres are pretty tired they've done a lot of hard racing there's a number 77 car pushing on Alexander Graf at the win of the Memphis Racing Chevrolet the Swedish driver looking for good things this weekend and with 12 cars on the circuit now rather than the 28 that we had earlier there's a bit more spare tarmac and therefore the times I'm sure are going to be quicker so Alan Day is going to pop the first time in from this session and already with the warm tyres of course they've not had to heat the tyres up to the same degree you see beautifully clipping the apex of Paddock Hill Bend which you don't really get the impression on the television you have to commit to that apex before you even see the corner and as soon as you get there it's like a roller coaster the circuit just drops and drops and drops away but Alan Day perfect on the apex for what was Paddock Hill Bend, neat and tidy through Druid. Here he comes out of Graham Hill Bend, running a little bit wide, but not too far. Fred Gabion and Jim Market Urkely are the next of the couple of cars in the queue, and then it looks like it is going to be the next of the cars thereafter, and that's the number 11 PK Carsport machine in the hands of Stenis Longin. His father, Bert, rejoining the championship this weekend. It's great to see Bert back in the championship. So, Stevie Longjean, an Elite Two champion a couple of seasons ago, over the start finish line. Alan Day tops the time. Gianmarco Urkeli has just gone a little bit quicker, and that is a new qualifying lap record for Gianmarco Urkeli. A 48.302 betters the 48.390 that was set by Fred Gabion a few seasons ago and are we going to see a bit more time squeezed out of that one so Gianmarco Urkeli is quickest Fred Gabion a runner-up in this championship on a couple of occasions in the RDV Toyota Camry is second quickest but it's a Ford at the moment and it's heading towards pole position and a bit like we've had all year Ford is quickest Toyota is second Chevrolet is third the three, three different manufacturers represented in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series are all there inside the top three with a minute and 30 seconds to go the cars getting over the start finish line now will be starting their penultimate qualifying lap and already if we go to go quicker the answer is Giamarco Urkeli doesn't but Alan Day does and gets himself onto the front row of the grid also now up to third is Mark Goosens and Fred Gabion who did not improve his time the number three Toyota Camry moves off the front row of the grid and is now bumped all the way down to fourth quickest so Gianmarco Urkeli with the qualifying record, Fred Gabion is also below the former qualifying record here. And now so is Alan Day and Mark Goosen, so we've got three cars all below the former qualifying record. And five drivers separated in fact by 0.1 of a second at this stage. In fact, so Loris Hazemans goes to the top of the time, so Loris Hazemans at the wheel of the number 50. Ford Mustang now to the top of the time. The checkered flag is a minute and 30 seconds away. Fred Gabion goes back to the top of the times by five one thousandths of a second. 48.232 for Fred Gabion. So that's the black and white Toyota Camry. Here's Loris Hazemans. There's the Toyota Camry of Fred Gabion. He has got Giamarco Urkeli behind him at this stage. The wheel of the racers, number 
nine Ford Mustangs. So these are the cars that are first and second quickest in this qualifying session. Here they come sprinting their way down the Cooper straight in towards the sweeping corner at Surtees that brings them up towards this never-ending right corner, really. It starts as McLaren, then turns into Clearways, and it's finally Clark Kerr before they can slowly feed in the throttle. As we heard from Alex Sedgwick, the car moving around. Check and flag is coming out now. Time on our screen has stopped counting down, but five minutes have gone, rest assured. And it looks as though it is Fred Gavion who is potentially heading towards a pole position here at Brands Hatch. And we just wait for all of the field to come over the start-finish line, which will include Alexander Graf and Alex Sedgwick, who are just coming through now to see whether they've had any change in the times. And it is Fred Gavion, number three, the RDV competition Toyota Camry, that heads onto pole position, his second pole position here at Brands Hatch. He claimed pole in 2013. Well, he has claimed pole position for the 2018 NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series race with a time of a 48.232, a new qualifying record for Fred Gabion. Second quickest was the number nine Ford Mustang from Racers Motorsport of Gianmarco Ercoli with a 48.237. Third quickest is the reigning champion, a man who's won three races so far this season of the four that we've had, which is Alan Day at the wheel of the Cal Racing Chevrolet with a 48.253. That means that the top three cars separated by 21 thousandths of a second. And Loris Heismans, who is fourth quickest at the wheel of the number 50 Ford Mustang, was only in further eight one thousandths behind with a 48.261. Fifth quickest was number 11, former champion in elite two, Stenis Longjean with a 48.333. Sixth quickest was number 91, Mark Goosens for Brax Racing with a 48.374. Nicola Rocca returning to the championship with the Cal Racing number 56 Chevrolet was seventh quickest with a 48.405. Uh, eighth quickest, number 24, Anthony Kumpen uh, with his Chevrolet for PK Car Sport with a 48.3. 424. Alex Sedgwick, what a result for the British driver, the only Brit in the field. His first NASCAR race at Brands Hatch. Plenty of support for him this weekend. The number 90 car uh, is ninth quickest with a 48.501. Tenth quickest for number 12, Francisco Cini with a 48.844. Eleventh quickest for 77, Alexander Graf, the Swedish driver with his Chevy with a 48.875. And the Ford Mustang of Thomas Ferrando, number 37 was 12th quickest with a 48.904. That means the top 12 are separated by 0.672 of a se second. And how about this? The top eight separated by less than 0.2 of a second. For Fred Gavilon, though, it's his 12th career pole position, and he will hugely look forward to, I'm sure, starting on pole, and he knows how important pole position is here at Brands Hatch for the Elite One race, which will be coming up later on today. So that's it for qualifying for Elite One for the moment. We can already see the pit lane is full, and out of the vast majority of the cars have jumped the drivers, and handing them over to the Elite Two drivers. Now, there's no specific order that the cars go out onto circuit in Elite Two, unlike Elite One, where it's its fastest times from free practice that dictate the order they go out. For the Elite Two, it's any order that they'll go out. But what we do see is, whilst it's the same cars, in most of the cases it's different drivers, but not necessarily in the case of all of them. The likes of the number 66 car that we see there is a change of driver. That is Christoph Bouchou, who has now handed the car over to the Austrian driver, Clermont Sparovitz. So that car has been handed over, but the likes of the number two machine in the hands of Mira Kenko for part one of qualifying. Well, Mira is one of those drivers that races in both Elite One and Elite Two. It's the same also the likes of the number 78 Brax Racing Ford Mustang of Jerry Zavert. He also races in both Elite One and Elite Two, so there's plenty to keep in the course of the weekend. Number 46 car, which is winning fast now. That's another driver that does both races, Justin Kuntz, who's just been out to qualify. There is that number two car I was talking about, Miro Kenka, who will be competing in both Elite One and Elite Two this weekend. And this Elite Two is the most unpredictable division. Only Wilfried Busena is a driver who is amongst these who has secured a victory here at Brands Hatch. And Wilfried Busena, who has just qualified that number 73 car, has handed it over for Elite 2 to Paul Guillaud. Uh, Wilfred Brucena has now taken over the number 37 car that was in the hands of Thomas Ferrando in Elite 2 and has jumped into that, sorry, in, in Thomas Ferrando's hands for Elite 1 and has jumped into that for Elite 2. So Wilfred Brucena, a driver who, again, races in both of the Elite 1 and Elite 2 divisions, but for him it's rather unusual. He actually races a different car in each one of those. So the first car that is in the queue is Paul Gio, the teenager, the 18-year-old. He was the Volant now winner back in 2016. 
and all over the course of this season has been pretty solid with the performances we haven't seen him on the podium as yet so far this year but for Paul Guillaume he'll be hoping that he can have a solid weekend his best result was fourth that came at race two at Valencia for round two of the championship season which of course takes in as we've said Valencia in Spain it takes in Francia Corta in Italy after Francia Corta we're here at Brands Hatch we'll head to Tour in France at the back end of this month and the first day of July the 30th of June and the 1st of July then we move on to the semi-finals which are in Germany at Hockenheim and the finals as they have done last year take place in Belgium at Solder for the home of course the Belgian Grand Prix and Jan Dumery who is amongst the field and took his first ever NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series win last time out at Francia Quarter has claimed a pole position here previously Jan Dumery and that was last year in the 2017 qualifying for it and I think he is the only driver that's claimed an outright pole in Elite 2 that is here because the likes of Toma Ferrando, of course, has now moved on to Elite 1. Salvador Tineo Arroyo, who we saw out at Valencia, has not been out subsequently. Uh, Florian Rinawa has moved on to other things. Uh, Marcelo Canuti has moved on to other things. And Ander Villarino, who is uh, a driver who has been massively successful in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series over the years, is sadly not racing with us anymore. But we'll see as to whether Guillaume Dumery can add to the pole position he took last year at Brand Hatch in Elite 2 division or whether any of the other cars that are all sitting patiently in the pit lane area ready to head out same format can take that pole position away from what he is trying to strive to do so same format 10 minute qualifying session top 12 will then go through to fight it out for Super Bowl around this beautiful undulating 1.2 mile 1.7 kilometer Brands Hatch Indy circuit as it is we've got the Grand Prix circuit which is longer but we're on the Indy circuit this weekend our fastest in free practice was Ulysses Del So and Ulysses Del So is driving the number three RDB competition Toyota Camry that was driven by Fred Gabion in the Elite One division now Ulysses 20 years of age finished fourth in the championship last year the Frenchman who we're hoping we might be able to get him into the commentary box maybe for the tour round in France and can co-commentate with us over the course of the Elite One races over the weekend it'd be great if we could arrange that so Ulysses will be hoping that he can carry through the pace that he clearly had yesterday so there's Paul Guillaume he has had a fourth place so far this season number 41 car is Max Lancer, another one of the drivers that is doing both Elite 1 and Elite 2 divisions, Max Lancer, at the wheel of the Chevrolet Camaro for this week, and that's one of the cars that's got, I think, the new front end of the club. Chevrolet Camaro, next to the cars in the queue is the Alex Cuffey racing car in the hands of the Japanese driver, Ken Kamuro, who's a rookie to this championship, we've seen him racing previously in the Asian Formula 3 championship, has Ken Kamuro. weekend here at Brands Hatch and Justin Kuntz with two minutes to go before the cars roll out. Justin Kuntz is the fourth car in the queue, another one of the drivers of both, both Elite 1 and Elite 2 divisions. And Justin Kuntz, he is a, another driver that sort of has had really a mixed season of racing so far. Number 46 car in the hands of the German. Finished 13 and 29th respectively in Valencia. Better weekend in Francia Quarter where he was 8th in the first race and 7th in the second. You see the officials there almost ready to go. We've got double checking the countdown. The 10 minutes is set on the clock and with no order for this qualifying session. Finding space for your lap is going to be very, very difficult indeed. It's difficult for the Elite Ones where there's sort of a, a process and an order that has to be gone through. But for Elite Two, the most unpredictable division then it's going to be I would imagine slightly chaotic you can see just how full the pit lane is and there's still a few cars trying to nose their way out of the garage not least of which is Florian Venturi the number 32 go fast racing car the go fast team that we see racing in NASCAR both on this and of course on the other side of the Atlantic as well and Florian Venturi another quick quick rookie only 17 years of age I think he is the youngest driver across the field yet again this weekend but he's third in the 
French Formula 4 Championship last year, moving over from single-seaters to big NASCARs, and well, heavy NASCARs as well, really, 1,210 kilograms or 2,670 pounds, 400 brake horsepower, V8. So you can imagine the, the weight transfer difference from a single-seater to a NASCAR with Mario Venturi at the wheel of the number 32 machine has coped beautifully with the transition. So the green flag waves, we now get qualifying underway for the Elite 2 division. So the clock is already ticking down. And would you believe we're not far off now? 10 minute qualifying session. There's only nine and a half minutes left that you can see already still how busy the pit lane is. And let alone how busy it's then going to be when the pit lane's empty and they're all out on circuit. So qualifying absolutely the key to this one. As we said earlier on, it seems to be the front row wins. And well, Wilfred Busena, who is the man who comes into this weekend hoping for good things. He leads the championship by 11 points, does Wilfred Busena. He is driving, let's not forget, the number 37 Knauf car in this one. He's got a love-hate relationship with Brands Hatch. Uh, the British track hosted the Frenchman's first Elite 2 win back in 2014 when he came from 13th on the grid to first in what was spectacular fashion. It also earned him the Iron Man nickname uh, thanks to his fiery crash on the Red to Druids in 2015. So he's had good fortune. He's also had pretty bad fortune here as Wilfred Boussena. We'll see what, to what he might be able to do. There's a number 73 car of the Boilant Canal winner, Paul Gio. That's number two, Mira Kenka. There is number 37, Wilfred Boussena. So that's the car to watch out for that may well be looking to try and grab a pole position. As you say, it's only Guillaume Dumoy is the only driver in the field that has had a pole here previously. And Guillaume is driving the number 24 PK car sport machine. Traffic already for Paul Guillaume looking to try and crack on with a lap. There goes number 32 Florian Venturi with Ulysses Del So and Dario Carzo, number eight machine, all round through Druids together. You can see them all still bunched up. There's not a great deal of spare tarmac, is there? But the cars sort of going slower to try and find space. means the quicker cars who have thought they got the space are trying to push off. The tyres will have been warmed up by the Elite One drivers. There's number 56, which is going to be in the hands of Mattia Dreza, the Polish driver. 22 years of age is Mattia Dreza. As we saw him briefly squeeze his way through and past one of the slower cars. Here is the number 10 machine, and that is Marco Stieb, the 41-year-old German. Marco Stieb, who was front runner in Formula Vauxhall Lotus single-seater racing back in the late 90s. Tom Bonham, number 91 for Rax Racing, former world cycling champion, is about to work his way over the start-finish line. And let's see what he might be able to do as we now flick back to Julian Schell at the wheel of the Pegasus Racing 29 machine. Frenchman, 39 years of age, in the wheel of the Chevrolet. Maybe he's right, but hope that he can work his way through into Super Bowl. And Marco Steen, who we just spoke about, had a, a crash yesterday at Paddock Hill Bend, where the cars have locked up and went at a fair pace in towards the barriers. The car's been rebuilt overnight. This is a number 10 racing total Chevy of Marco Steen, but I think he's just coming towards our camera now on the left-hand side. Tom Bonin squeezes his way through up the inside and doesn't want to compromise the qualifying lap for which is now at the top of the times. Unity Del So clambers his way up from 17th to the top of the times. Number uh, the car racing machine of Mattia Dreza goes quicker. And now Guillaume Dumoury goes even quicker for the pole sitter here. 48.919 for the number 24 PK Car Sport Chevy. He will be on a high because of course he claimed his first NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series win last time out did Guillaume Dumoury finished of the four races we've had three of them inside the top four he's had a good start to the season other than the blip in race two at Valencia where he finished in 25th position there is number 24 car now Gil Dumri. I think he's happy that the time he's posted is good enough for the moment the number 19 car that was in the hands of Alex Sedgwick for the elite one qualifying now has Pedro Bonnet behind the wheel on Dumery looks as though he's saving the tyres and possibly heading to the pit lane. The number 24 PK to Carport Chevy staying out of harm's way. What is a very famous number in NASCAR? Great livery on that car as well, I've got to say. And yeah, indeed, Guillaume Dumery, the provisional fastest man in his first part of qualifying, heads into the pit lane.
happy that a 48.919 should see him hang on to a place inside the top 12. As long as you're inside the top 12, that's all that matters. As soon as you're comfortable that you're inside the top 12, get into the pit lane, save your tyres, and get yourself at the front of the queue, ready to go back out for the second part of qualifying. There you can see the brand new front end of the PK Passport Chevrolet Camaro. So we've got that new front end, and we've got the subtly different older front end on the car heading towards us now, the Camaro SS. So, Gion Dumri topping the times at this stage. Ulysses Delso is second quickest. This is the number 77 car that is in the hands of Guillaume de Flandre. Now, that is third quickest at the moment. Guillaume de Flandre has had a pretty clear lap here. And what can he do this time as he heads over the start finish line? He's second in the championship standings coming into this weekend. And that was a quicker lap from Guillaume de Flandre, 49.111 still sees him third quickest and now that he's done the quick lap he's now caught the traffic and as you can see he's backing things off with four and a half minutes to go you can see still just how busy it is some cars on quick laps some cars on slow laps and trying to stay out of the way as best as they possibly can but it's rather busy on the cooper straight which is the bottom straight here as paul Gio slows things up and looks as he's heading in towards the pit lane. Also looks as though the Florian Venturi car was off to the right of your screens there. There is the car number three in the hands of Unity Del So, second quickest at this stage for RDV competition. We saw both Fred Gabion and Ulysses Del So have good weekends at Franchi Quarter in that same car last time out. Painted half white, half black. This Toyota Camry, one of only a couple in the field, turns its way through Surtees up towards McLaren. There's traffic ahead which I don't think is quite going to come into play here. Ulysses Del So, is he going to head for the pit lane? It looks so he is, yeah, he slows things up. And he heads for the pit lane again, comfortable, but with under three and a half minutes to go, he is going to be inside the top 12 and therefore will be heading towards the Super Bowl. Number 32 is Florian Venturi, currently third quickest, heading his way up towards the braking area for Druids, which is a corner you can break very late on. It's so uphill there, the gradient, that as soon as you lift off the throttle, the car really starts to decelerate because you're going uphill. Get on the brakes, swim the throttle, down through Grand Hill, then he goes, as Ulysses does so at the wheel of the Toyota Camry, heads for the pit lane, second quickest in is already, sitting at the end of pit lane, ready to go out for Super Pole. Others bouncing over the kerbs, Position 12, position 12, which is the, the last of those to get through to Super Bowl, just keeps changing all of the time. It's changed again there by the look of things. And that is Jill Linster now, who is clinging on to a place inside the top 12. There was a great improvement there, up to fifth quickest, gaining eight places for Felipe Ravello. That was a very, very good lap for Felipe Ravello, the Brazilian driver at the wheel of the number 56 Cal Racing Chevrolet. The time he posted was a 49.293 and that should again see him with a little more than two minutes to go safely through the Super Bowl here at Brands Hatch. Into the mid lane has come Florian Venturi, French rookie, so basically French Formula 4 championship last year. Roman Inietta, his teammate for Go Fast Racing, giving him a bit of advice. Number 77 still pressing on though, which is Guillaume de Flandre, fourth quickest, two minutes to go. The man who is currently 12th in this qualifying session is going to be the number eight car of Nicola Frisitano. He's just about clinging onto a place inside the top 12 as Felipe Ribello goes to the top of the times of 48.902 from Felipe Ribello. Now, hopefully, that was a clean lap and therefore won't get removed. The officials get photographs that show the cars, particularly turn three, go beyond the curb line. There's very little you can do to argue a case when there's photographic evidence that you ran wide. And let's hope that that was a clean lap for Felipe Ribello. A fantastic lap, if it was. And I'm sure watching at home, that will please Marco Niabru. And Felipe Ribello has popped that quick lap in. And into the pit lane it comes Felipe. And he is looking as though he's going to have a big old smile on his face with that one. Of course, he doesn't give you pole position. He needs to do the same from the Super Pole session, which is now, what, less than 60 seconds away before the checkered flag goes out. And the man who is hanging on to a place inside the top 12 now is going to be Paul Guillaume at the wheel of the number 73 Canal car. So Gilles Linster, who was 12, has been bumped down a position because Paul Guillaume has just put a time in as a tenth of a second quicker than Gilles Linster. So, so Paul Guillaume may well be going through. And the session is being stopped by the look of things because the red flag is coming out and 
as to what the reason is. Well, our cameras have not picked up on anything as yet that suggests as to why the session is being red flagged. But clearly, something has happened. So you can see the red lights are on on the gantry. There are only 14 seconds to go. So anybody that was on a quick lap that was better than their previous best may well be disappointed. And there's the reason. There we go. We can see that Maxime Pampel, the rookie, has put the Belgian driver Academy Chevrolet just very briefly into the barriers and that looks as though that is on the run down towards turn number three so it's coming out of Druids which is turn two and down towards the area of what is the breaking out for Graham Hill Bend and in usual brands such fashion the car sort of runs wide coming out of turn number two and usually snaps across the circuit backwards and into the barriers on the opposite side and for Maxime Pampel that is rather disappointing Maxime will come and join us in the commentary box for the Elite One race tomorrow as well. So we're looking forward to having Maxine come to join us for commentary tomorrow. There will be no resumption as well, so the chequered flag has now been called as well. There are only 14 seconds to go, so there wouldn't have been a great deal changed. So let's just run you through the cars and we will see out for Super Bowl. That number 11 car in the hands of Felipe Ravello, popping in the quickest time, a 48.902. And second quickest was number 24, that car there of Guillaume Dumery with a 48.919. Third quickest was number three, the Toyota Camry of Ulysses Del So with a 49.099. So Ulysses safely through to Super Bowl. And fourth quickest is number 32, Florian Venturi for Go Fast Racing. Fifth quickest, well, there's number 56 car. That's Mattia Dreza. He was seventh quickest, so that car will be through to Super Bowl, the Cal Racing. And they're not necessarily in the same order that they we would expect. There is number 37, Wilfred Busena. He was ninth quickest, so he's through to Super Bowl with a 49.374. So that's why that car is also at the end of the pit lane. Number 33 car of Freddie Nordstrom returning to the championship, the Anglo-Swede, who has been racing in the NASCAR Williams Universities regularly for a good number of seasons, but returning this year for his first event. He is through in 11th quickest, number 33, with a time of a 49.390. And then we can see the car that's just behind him, I think, is going to be the number 73 car of Paul Guillaume, who was the last of the cars that made it through to Super Bowl, the Knauf Racing Ford Mustang with a 49.468. Freddie Nordstrom did claim an elite one podium here back in 2013 and for the anglo Swede, as we say, returning to the championship. He's not concentrating on any specific championship this year. We've seen him claim wins in a championship we have here in the UK called GT Cup, where he was racing a Maserati GT4 at Donington Park. He claimed class wins in both races there when he was sharing with a young driver called Sam Randon in the UK but it's his first weekend of racing NASCARs this year and well for Freddie who say has been a regular in this championship he was seventh in the overall championship standings back in 2013 and 2014 he was 10th in 2016 he was still inside the top 12 last year as well he finished 12th in the championship last year but for Freddie Nordstrom who has done most of his racing in the UK as an adult we're hoping for a solid weekend that's the number 77 car of Guillaume de Flandre. And as you can see, the team ready and poised. They've double checked the tyre pressures. They've released a bit of the pressure out of the BF Goodrich tyres. And Guillaume de Flandre, who was fifth quickest in the first aspect of qualifying, posting a time of a 49.111. We'll see whether he might want to squeeze a bit more out of that. The fastest time we saw was in the 48, 48902. There are only two cars in the 48 second bracket. 48. 0.9024, the number 11 car of Felipe Rebello, PK Car Sport, and well, last year's pole sitter, Guillaume Dumoulin, at the wheel of his number 24 machine, which again is PK Car Sport, made it such a solid weekend, Felipe Rebello and Guillaume Dumoulin at Frangia Corta. He also was in the 48 second bracket, so it's just a, a slight delay into the Super Pole session because we're in the process still of recovering the car of Maxime Pampel, the Belgian rookie who, as you saw, popped the car into the barriers. So there's a bit of sweeping up for the marshals to be done. The recovery just now happening. I don't think there'll be a great deal of damage to the car. It is being winched onto the back. You can see Maxime Pampel there still with the crash helmet on, just sort of advising the recovery crews as to what the, the best course of action will be to get the car up onto the flatbed recovery unit and once that is done the circuit will be clear great 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 shot of that's the go fast racing car isn't it yeah that's Florian Venturi and showing 
and somebody around one of the cars yesterday. It's quite, despite the fact it's a big car, the driving cockpit is quite tight and confined in these cars. You can see the concentration on the face of Florian Venturi as he's now hugely, hugely focused on this super pole. He may well be, as we see with some of the drivers, they'll close their eyes and they'll try and visualise the map that they need to do and try and make sure that they hit their braking point, that marker point they've made in their peripheral vision. They won't look at it, they'll just wait until it gets into the right point of their peripheral vision before they stamp on the brakes. And let's not forget, you know, these are heavy cars, 2,670 pounds. They still brake very, very well indeed, I've got to say, before they then squeeze the throttle, feed the throttle back on. We've got huge crowd sitting down in the pit lane, a load of school children. We had school children yesterday that managed to get a, a guided tour around the circuit. They all jumped onto a minibus and were given a guided tour around the Brandsatch circuit. And I think that's the same group that were here yesterday that are enjoying their weekend here at Brandsatch. Yeah, big old smiles all around. One of the local schools that's come along to support it. And it's great that we're able to do that for the local schools who in turn have shown us great, great support as well. And it helps them with some of their studies as well. So, you know, with, with, Within the UK, we have something called STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And that's to encourage young people that careers in engineering, whether it be motorsports engineering, or whether it be structural engineering, or highways engineering, or whatever it might be, genetic engineering. Engineering is really important, and they're enjoying it, as are some of the other attractions as well that we have here at Brands Hatch, with monster truck rides and fairground rides and everything. It really is. It says it's American Speed Fest, and it is. Not only lots of on-circuit action and off-circuit action, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of American cars that descend on Brands Hatch, and we are expecting, such as the weather forecast in the UK, we've got good weather for a change in the UK, we are going to have a very loud crowd this weekend, and I think all of the school children are all going to be running after the autographs that we'll have, because we'll have autograph sessions throughout the course of this weekend, and the teachers have come along with them as well, it makes it a, a great family weekend, and the grid walk is open to everybody here at Brands Hatch to, to make their way down and get up close and personal to the cars and the stars of course of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series and as we say it's a very busy weekend generally for the NASCAR family as we look at the Elite 2 cars still down there in the pit lane whilst the recovery is almost done now of the car but yeah busy weekend of racing we had the Camping World Truck Series racing at Texas Motor Speedway Johnny Sorter claiming what I think was his fourth win of the season in the Camping Truck Series. We've got the Xfinity race taking on take place later on today in Michigan. And of course, we've got the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series in Michigan. Kurt Busch having qualified on pole for that. So our American themed weekend on the opposite side of the Atlantic as part of round five and round six, the third race meeting of the year for the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. And there you can see the truck has now been recovered. It's just making its way uh, off the circuit. So Maxime Pampel's number seven Belgian Driver Academy, Chevrolet out of harm's way, the recovery truck out of harm's way. I think the final little bits of sorting out just being done, it gives our marshals the opportunity to grab a little bit of respite in the warm conditions here in the UK. You can see there is a, a very, very slight breeze, not a great deal at all. And now that the car is out of the way, what we then need to just do is make sure that all of the circuit furniture, the barriers and the tyre wall and the belting that sits in front of the barriers is all where it ought to be a little bit of sweeping up being done and who's that on the phone now? that's that's it it's alexander graf isn't it yeah, making making a quick call just to find out update somebody as to how qualifying went for him and alexander graf i would have thought would be really pleased with that as well i don't recall he's been through to super pole so far this year so he'll be rather pleased to say the least that he managed in his elite one session to make it through to Super Bowl. We haven't seen him inside the top 10 as yet so far this year, so he's a multiple Swedish V8 champion, but his best result so far in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series was just outside of the top 10, 11th place, and that was the first race of the season. Of course, it's the first racing season for Memphis Racing as well. They are a new team to the championship, and he was on the flight back from Francia Court of chatting to a couple of the team engineers there, and they are thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying their NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series season. Alexander Graf sharing with Guillaume de Flandre and well, that number 77 car in the hands of the 23 year old Belgium will be heading out onto circuit very shortly because as you can see the last couple of circuit vehicles are now moving away from 
the point where Maxine Pampel's car made contact with the barriers and then we should once the Telly loader, the JCB is out of the way. We should hopefully very shortly see a green flag at the end of the pit lane. So engines are now being turned on down in the pit lane, and we are any second now about to go green here for what will be a five minute session for Super Bowl. You can see the 12 cars that have made it through all there, and the first out onto the circuit, ready to start this Super Bowl session for Elite Two for round five of the 2018 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. It is four the pole sitter, the 31-year-old Belgian Guillaume Dumery is first out there. He was runner-up in the Elite Two Championship last year. He claimed the rookie crown as a result of finishing runner-up in the championship. And he comes into this weekend. Guillaume Dumery lying fourth in the overall championship standings, just 14 points off the leader, Wilfried Boussena. And he will know the pole position here he is going to be so, so, so vital because he claimed pole here last year in the Elite 2 division. He didn't come through to win because both of the races were secured by Tomo Ferrando, who was competing in both Elite 2 and Elite 1 last year. He switches his attentions exclusively to Elite 1 this year, so we don't see him out in this session. So, Guillaume Dumery will be hoping that off the back of his first ever NASCAR Wheel in Euro Series win, win at Francia Quarter, he might be able to pop it on pole again here this year and maybe try and claim a win. So, we get the session away you can see Julian Scheller again you can see the movement of the car of course this won't have helped really we've had that delay in between the sessions so that means the tyres start to cool down again so the first few laps they've got to try and very quickly get on it build those temperatures in those tyres again because the car will be moving around underneath them and well for the number 56 car of Mattia Dreza you can see him there pushing 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 he's caught up behind the 20 year old Justin Kutz at this stage he finished sixth in the championship last year Mattia Dreza for the Cal Racing team sideways coming out of turn number three up the inside as he heads in towards the sweeping left-hander at Surtees you can see him using all of the curves but no more and then working his way through clearways and Clark curve and this great mix of veterans and young drivers we have in Elite 2 that's why it's so varied we have some very very quick older drivers some really quick rookies and to the top of the times on the first flying lap has gone the go fast racing Ford Mustang of Florian Venturi to the top of the times with a 49.443 remember we were in the 48s it was the high 48s 48 nines in the first part of qualifying so for Super Bowl there's a bit more life gone out of the tires but the drivers are getting ever more used to the circuit a slight 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 block break there from Florian Venturi but it's nice and neat and tidy through Graham Hill Bend sweeps his way round through Surtees Court you can see the sideways movement of the car bouncing over the curves but he gathers it all up and this lap for Florian Venturi and remember he's only 17 years of age he is a rookie he finished third in the Formula 4 championship in France last year and Florian Venturi is going to try and get himself back onto pole at this stage because Ulysses Delso has gone to the top of the times but Florian Venturi manages to retake pole position with two minutes to go Mattia Dreza is up to second position for Cal Racing at the wheel of the number 56 Chevrolet uh, with a 49.4 but for Florian Venturi he's got a bit of daylight between himself and the cars behind because he is on a 49.1 as Nicholas Rizzitano at the wheel of the racers number eight Ford Mustang gains 10 places he was down in 12 he's now to second quickest and he is also a rookie for this year he's popped in a 49.2 that's the red car with the checkers down the side of it and there it is actually Nicholas Rizzitano now so great work by the director to pick up Nicholas Rizzitano turning his way through what is Graham Hill Bend along the Cooper Strait sweeping his way in towards Surtees which is turn number four then the never-ending turn number five had another shuffle for pole position because Guillaume Dumery last year's pole sitter has gone to the top of the times once more Nicholas Rizzitano who started this lap in second is now down into fourth so you can see the time shuffling all the time Dumery was on pole that car there already it's changed again he's down to second quickest Guillaume Dumery 49.033 is Guillaume Dumery's time but the provisional pole time is set by number 77 the Memphis Racing Chevy of Guillaume de Flandre once more so what can Guillaume Dumery do this time he'll get this lap and one more lap in if he wants to try and claim pole position the car that's running behind him on the road is Ulysses Delso for RDV competition the white and black Toyota Camry 
And as Gion Dumarin goes over the start finish line, he can't do it. But, Gion, but uh, Florian Venturi for Go Fast Racing goes back to the top of the times. The number 32 got of Florian Venturi a 48.934. And Guillaume de Flandre goes even quicker for Memphis Racing with a 48.786. So it's shuffling all of the time. Ten seconds to go before the chequered flag is out. And this car here heading towards our camera. Guillaume Dumery needs to get on with it here because he's no longer third, he's now fourth because Felipe Rebello goes third quickest. So it's still shuffling around, chequered flag is being readied and we are going to see the cars head over the start-finish line shortly but it is that car there that at the moment is occupying pole position 48.786 for Guillaume de Flandre as he works his way round through the last couple of corners Cars over the start finish line have not as yet been able to better his time and it looks as though he may well be heading for pole position because half of the field have taken the chequered flag and Guillaume de Flandre is still as yet to take it. Here he comes over the start finish line. Now that lap was slower but it's still good enough for him to line up on pole position. So Guillaume de Flandre claims his first pole position in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series with a time of a 48.786. Felipe Rebello with exactly the same time on the final lap. Felipe Rebello posts exactly the same time to the nearest one thousandth of a second of 48.786 but because he set it later on in the session he will only start on the outside of the front row of the grid. I kid you not, both cars with exactly the same time and that is getting a round of applause and a wave from our supporters down there in the pit lane. So number 77, Guillaume de Flandre, quickest, 48.786. Second quickest with the same time, 48.786. Number 11, Felipe Rebello. I don't think we've had that before in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Third quickest is number three, Ulysses Del So with a 48.895. And fourth quickest on his return to the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, number 33, Fred Freddie Nordstrom, very familiar with Brands Hatch, uh, 48.901. Fifth quickest for number 32, Florian Venturi, a 48.923. Sixth quickest only for last year's pole sitter, number 24, Guillaume Dumery. He may well be slightly disappointed with that, a 49.023. Seventh quickest was 37, which is Will Threed Busena with a 49.070. Eighth quickest was number eight, Nicolas Rizzitano with a 49.180. Ninth quickest was 29, Julian Schell with a 29.217. And 10th quickest was number 56, Matti Dreza with a time of a 49.360. 11th quickest was 46, Justin Kuntz with a 49.468. And the last car to run in the Super Bowl session will line up 12th quickest, and that's the number 73 Knauf racing car of Paul Guillaume. So that is qualifying done and dusted for both Elite One and for Elite Two as well for what has been a great start to the weekend. Guillaume de Flandre raced the first time on ovals in the US when he was just 14 years of age at Bowman Gray. He won one race in tour in 2015 and that is actually his second pole position in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Now we've dug out the files and had a look back through the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series archives to give you all of that information. So that's it for qualifying at this stage. We will of course be back at Brands Hatch later on. Don't forget we've got racing coming up. We've got the Elite One race if you're watching in Europe. Scheduled our stream to start at 2.40 Central European time. If you're watching over in the US then it's 8.40 a.m. Eastern time and our Elite 2 race takes place also later on today here in the UK at Brands Hatch. It is the stream starting at 5 minutes past 6 Central European time. And if you're watching over in the US, well, you can enjoy it over lunch because it will be just gone at 12 o'clock noon, 5 past 12 Eastern time in the US. So that's all for the moment from Brands Hatch. Join us again later on for the, for the racing.
father came to me and said, oh, where did you pick up the information from? Uh, man, Facebook. Yeah, well, we need, to, we, need the, we need the drivers, really, to fill out an information sheet. They don't. No, they, they should. They never do. And when they do, they don't send me the scanned document.